All right, so today we're back to working on the old Ford 820. Basically, what this thing needs is a new input seal on the transmission, and since we're in there, we're gonna replace the clutch and probably do the rear main seal on this engine as well. The, the problem is the clutch on this seems to be rusted solid. I can't get it to engage. I also can't figure out where neutral is on this thing. I jacked with it for probably a solid hour this morning. This is not, as you can see, a regular H-pattern shifter. It's got like a circular design with a upper and lower section, uh, but none of these gears seems to be neutral. So uh, I can't really move this thing, and uh, so we need to get a tractor in here and drag this backwards so it's underneath the gantry so, so we can split it. And the problem is the tractor I want to use is also having some problems. This is my little L175 Kubota. And uh, it's that for about six months and the battery went completely dead and it is no longer any good. So we have to procure another one. And I think the battery I want to use for this is the one in my uh, engine driven welding machine. Really there's two batteries on this welding trailer. There's one just for the air compressor, then one for the welder. There's no need for that, so we're gonna run the welder off of this battery as well, and that'll free up that battery which can go in the tractor. Check it out, I got this uh, welder put back together. This is the first start of this thing. There we go, it works. It doesn't actually need an oil change. I just never figured out how to reset that. <laughs> so you can see it's now wired in with the air compressor. And it all runs off of one battery, which will be easy to charge, easy to jump start off of, uh, whatever happens. All right, battery's charged. second shot with the glow plugs and this thing came right to life. It's been sitting for probably two or three weeks and it's uh, somewhere in the 40s this morning. So I could not move this tractor to save my life. It was sitting there. I don't know what happened. I, I know the clutch is stuck. Maybe the clutch got stuck er from sitting for like 10 months or however long it's been over there. Uh, but whatever the case, I absolutely could not budge this thing. But this thing, man, for being the size of an overgrown lawnmower, this is the handiest little thing in the universe. And it uh, basically just grabbed it and started pulling. Didn't even really feel it, even though this is probably at least a 4,000 pounds machine. And uh, I was able to get this positioned where it needs to go. And then I was able to roll it around a little bit by hand, just like I used to be. So I don't know what was hanging up, but it got unstuck. And now that this thing is here, we got to get to this area. So I guess we got to take apart basically the entire front section of the tractor. Right, Lucky? Sure, Dad, whatever. All right, let's see what happens.
So as you can see, progress is definitely being made. Uh, a couple things about this tractor. I noticed that when I turned this bolt, it would pretty much just spin. I could get absolutely no grip on it. But as you can see, this is actually a really cool design. I've not seen anything, that's yeah, cool by now, not seen anything quite like this before. Look, it just pops out, it's just a carriage bolt. I thought this is a stud that's broken off and I was either gonna have to weld on a new one or maybe get a whole nother radiator if it was really bad, but that's all it was. Biggest problem I've faced so far is that spline shaft. As one can imagine, it's extremely difficult to get apart anything spline when it's rusted together. But I just hit it with the old air hammer and uh, it actually came apart a lot easier than I was expecting. I really thought I was gonna have to saw this uh, shaft in two just to get this pump off the tractor then, I don't know, buy another one or make something else work. And this is the best surprise so far, as you can see. There used to be one bolt down there and uh, another one there. But they're gone, so as you can tell, the entire front end of this tractor is literally held on by those two bolts. That's it. This is why I made a video probably a week or so ago, and in it I said, and say it with me folks, with old tractors and farm equipment, you cannot assume anything. I mean, nothing at all. This is why I always recommend you go through everything before you actually entrust it to anything or take it out to the field. Because uh, otherwise, there's a chance, you know, you're cruising down the road and the front end comes off the tractor. You know, minor detail. is being made now looking at this uh, now looking at this we had at least one water leak and at least one oil leak from up here so I decided while this thing was still in the tractor and it was easy to have access to I was just gonna take everything off the front of this and we're gonna seal it up uh, I really wasn't planning on having to change the oil in this however that is kind of unfortunate but uh, yeah I just I guess there's a bolt that's lower than the drain on this so you know whatever it's just the way it goes anyway looking at this Everything seems to be in really good shape. I mean, we look at this uh, cam gear and there's hardly even any sludge on there. It's, it's almost unbelievably clean. Considering this has probably been in here since sometime in the 1950s. So I guess we gotta clean up these mating surfaces and uh, change the front, the front main seal. I hope that the one that I have will fit in this because uh, otherwise we are gonna have to drive up into the city and buy a seal, which I really don't wanna do. All right, uh, let's see how clean I can get all this stuff. The main battle with all that was just working through all that old hard-packed oil. It was disgusting, and there was so much, but I probably spent a solid hour so far today just chiseling through all that with a screwdriver. Big test is this seal going to come out? I'm fairly certain it comes out the back side, uh, but it might not. I hope we don't destroy this entire housing. But I got a socket that fits pretty decent. I think it's moving. Uh, I can't really tell. I might want to press it, but I'm, I might want to put it in the press, but I'm afraid of breaking this housing. Um, hmm. Get a little rougher with it. All 
Alright, I think it's coming. Yeah, it's coming out. Alright, it goes out the back side. Oh, there we go. Okay. What is that, a retainer or something? I don't think the new one has that. I think it's another kind. Alright, well, that's out. As soon as I saw, especially this bottom hole that seemed to be missing a bolt, I was like, man, this is gonna be bad. We're gonna be dealing with something broken off in there or whatever. But as you can see, we are definitely not. I ran a tap through there and through that upper bolt and there's absolutely not a thing in the world wrong with either of those. So what this means is that quite simply, someone uh, just put this back together, missing two out of the four bolts that hold the front end onto the tractor. Someone actually looked at this, missing half its bolts with, with a loader on the tractor as well. There's a lot of weight on this front end. Uh, and said, you know what? This is good. I'm, this is acceptable. I'm, I'm gonna send it just like this. I would feel perfectly safe with my family, friends, or loved ones operating this machine in this condition or working alongside it. This is good. I'm really glad that there's nothing wrong with these bolt holes and I don't have to spend half a day trying to remove a broken off bolt. I am genuinely happy about this. But, you know, for the sake of making this video, I kind of want to make a whole big production out of it. Like, I can't believe I found this. But the honest truth is I can because I find stuff like this on pretty much every machine that I work on. In fact, I was talking to mechanic Steve once. I was like, so Steve, if you had to just pick a ballpark number, what percentage of, of machinery here in the United States sees what you would consider to be adequate maintenance and is actually like fixed properly when something goes wrong or something needs to be done to it? He's, he thinks for me, he goes, under 10%. It's like, that sounds really, really low to me, but from what I've seen, I, I can't actually refute that. So, I mean, I don't know, it'll, it'll be right when we put it together, at least for the most part. I did totally mangle that bearing housing, that outer ring, I thought it was part of the old seal, and it turns out it wasn't. Oh well, the seal seals out to the sides of that, so as ugly as it is, I wish, uh, and I wish that that hadn't happened, I don't think it'll actually damage anything. Uh, it's not ideal, but, you know, I've never worked on one of these before, and now if I do this again, I will know that, and it's not going to cause the front end of the tractor to fall off, so this thing should still be in better shape than when it came in here. Alright, so I got the front of this thing put back together. I hope it doesn't leak. I'm feeling cautiously optimistic. The dog still seems to believe in me, so that's a positive. And uh, it was a little bit of a pain putting all this stuff back on here. Well, other than the water pump, I decided I was going to leave that part off because uh, it kind of interferes with reaching down to those bolts. So we'll put that on last, but yeah, you know, this needed to be done anyway. Something was leaking pretty, pretty substantially. And it was pretty nice being able to do this with the entire front of the tractor missing. That's the good news. The bad news is the uh, front cover on this ties into the oil pan. Um, so obviously that disrupted the oil pan gasket, which is really just RTV. I got a lot of that stuff off of there. I'm 50-50 on that part sealing, but if the oil pan on this leaks, it's not a big deal because, you know, this is actually competently designed. You know, it's, it's literally just an oil pan, you know. it's just flat and four sides and that's it. It's not like literally four different pieces of gasket going on sloping angles like the absolutely just important design on one of the other tractors I'm working on. So if that leaks, it's not really that big of a deal. And uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> that was a little bit of a rant, but that felt good. Next up, we got to get the actual engine out of here. I've been looking at this. There's these holes on the sides of the head. There's one in every corner. And I think if I can just fabric cobble like a little you know, dealio for this. It'll give me a nice place to attach onto with the gantry. Some people will pull these just by these studs up here, which I don't really want to do. Um, so, you know, let's see what we can do here. 